For this project, I'm using a new to me yarn, Itty Bitty from Sugarbush. It's a super fine merino, nylon, and cashmere blend that's incredibly soft. I'll have a link to where you can buy this yarn in the description box below, but if you're not able to get it, you should be able to substitute with another super fine weight yarn, no problem. We'll work the long tail cast on to get this one started, so get yourself a nice long tail. Lay the yarn over your needle and gather it in your hands like this. Then swing the needle down to grab the loop on your thumb. Swing it up to grab the loop on your finger. And release the thumb loop over the tip of the needle. That's your first two stitches cast on. Then keep going until you have 51 stitches on your needle. When you get that done, go ahead and flip the needle, knit the first stitch, then pull the yarn forward to purl the next stitch. So the repeat is super simple for this one. Simply knit one, then purl one. If you've done everything correctly so far, when you get to the end of the row, you should end with a knit stitch. So that's our first row completed and it doesn't look like much yet, but the repeat for this project is really simple and you've pretty much already seen it. So go ahead and flip your work and do exactly as you did in the last row. Knit the first stitch, followed by a purl, and a knit, and a purl, and that's as complicated as this pattern gets, believe it or not. Now, if you're still relatively new to knitting and you're not sure how to read your knitting or be able to tell what stitch is what, this little section should help. So look for the stitches with the line sitting right under the needle or right under the cord. Those are purl stitches and the others are knits, kind of look like little Vs. That'll come in handy when you have to put your cowl down You'll know where to pick back up if you can identify the knits and the purls you already made. Just remember, you'll have a knit followed by a purl for every row of this pattern. And you'll always purl the knits and knit the purls. If you're wondering where you can find the pattern, well, you can view it completely for free on my website. Or if you prefer to have a copy in hand to print or save for later, you can pick up the PDF from my shop. I'll have a link to both options in the description below so you can do what works best for you. So you'll keep going with that repeat through the first ball of yarn. I personally like to add the new ball of yarn to the end of a row, just makes it a little bit easier to weave those ends later. Make sure to leave yourself a bit of yarn from the first ball to weave in later. Now take your new yarn, fold it over, again leaving about six inches, set that aside, insert your needle to knit the first stitch, but rather than using your original yarn to knit the stitch, you'll grab the loop from the new yarn place it over the needle and pull it through. So that'll finish the stitch and it'll also get the process started of securing this new yarn to your project. You'll wanna work a few more stitches. And then tie the two ends to secure it for now. We'll clean that up a little bit later. So as you're working through that repeat and you're kind of working through that second ball of yarn, I wanna mention a crew neck sweatshirt available in my shop, just in case you're looking for something fun to wear. We rarely ever need yarn, right? But we always want yarn. And I tried to capture the humor in that with these sweatshirts. You can choose navy, black, or burgundy in size small through 2XL. If you do wanna order one, I will have a link in the description below. And if you do decide to get one for yourself, Thank you so much. That goes a long way to supporting this channel. All right, when you have a few yards left from your second ball of yarn, you'll be ready to bind off. Your cowl will measure about 32 inches long 
and a little more than eight inches wide. So to bind off, go ahead and work the first two stitches like normal, so knit, then purl. Then slide the first loop over the last. Knit the next stitch and pass the first loop over. Purl the next stitch and pass the first loop over. Now a couple tips here. If you're having trouble keeping the loops on your needle, make sure to pull that first loop out a little bit, get some slack on it, and hold the other loop, the second one, with your finger. And if you're getting confused on which stitch to work next, just remember the stitch pattern remains the same. You're knitting and purling every other stitch. In other words, you're knitting the purls and you're purling the knits. When only one loop remains, pull it up and pull the remaining yarn through the loop to fasten it off. So the front and the back of the cowl look exactly the same, so it really doesn't matter which way you lay it out to seam it up. Either way, fold the two ends together, thread the tail on the yarn needle, and seam the two edges. Now you can honestly work any seam you prefer. I'm just running back and forth because I really didn't leave enough yarn before binding off. So again, if you're watching this before you're working the project, make sure you leave a few yards before you start that bind off process. And that's all there is to it. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me here until the end. Don't forget to check the description below for links to the pattern if you have any questions whatsoever, you'll probably find the answer there. Also, don't forget those sweatshirts if you're looking for something fun to wear while you knit. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, well, I'd love to keep inspiring you to make something that makes you happy. So hit the subscribe button so I can see you back for the next one. Or if you've been around here for a while and you're already subscribed, I just want to remind you how much I appreciate your support. Watching, hitting that like button, sharing comments, or sharing my projects with your friends and family, buying PDFs and merch from my shop, checking out the patterns on my website, all of that stuff is an incredible support that fuels this channel and helps me keep doing what I'm doing. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. Happy knitting, and I'll see you in the next one.